10 Best Picks presents the Top 10 Best Electric Scooters. Starting at number 10. Razor E200. The Razor E200 electric scooter is another popular Razor Kids vehicle with some solid features, and it's a big hit with kids. Is it worth it? Let's find out. The Razor E200 electric scooter has all of the features that parents want and everything that kids crave in a scooter. The all-steel frame and fork make this ride strong and durable to the point that your child will probably outgrow this scooter before it has any structural problems. It is a lot tougher than it looks in the images. I also liked that the deck was nice and wide, with plenty of room for your kid's feet. That makes balancing on this vehicle a breeze for new or experienced riders. Along with durability, the Razor E200 brings with it a high-torque, ultra-quiet chain-driven motor, and it is all driven by an easy-to-use twist-grip throttle. The scooter weighs in at about 38 pounds and has a maximum rider weight limit of 154 pounds. That will allow most kids and many small adults an opportunity to ride. I tested it on several kinds of terrain, like dirt paths, rough asphalt, and grass. It performed decently on all, thanks to those large 8-inch pneumatic tires. It is powered by a 24V sealed lead-acid rechargeable battery system that will deliver up to 40 minutes of continuous use. The downside is that the Razor E200 battery needs to charge for about 12 hours. This is likely not too much of a downside for kids since, after 40 minutes of ride time, they may just wander back to some video games or find something else to occupy their time. Lastly, don't be intimidated by any assembly that is required. Assembly is easy. Most of the work is done for you before you take it out of the box. I think this review from Amazon says it all, it comes 95% assembled. My 9-year-old granddaughter and I assembled it in 15 minutes. So, yeah, you won't have any trouble getting it on the sidewalk in just a few minutes. Razor makes many kid-friendly electric scooters and has a great track record. Kids love the brand. The E200 is another solid winner. It has all of the right features for a reliable kid's scooter. A solid build quality, large deck, a quiet chain-driven motor, large 8-inch pneumatic tires that grip the ground, and it goes at the perfect speed for adventurous kids. Not too fast, not too slow. It also gives them just enough ride time at 40 minutes per battery charge. At number 9. Hiboy Max. The Hiboy Max electric scooter is a step up from your conventional rides. Being one of the underrated scooters in the market I saw the scooter getting quite some attention, and after testing it out for myself, I agree that it has earned every bit of praise it has received till now. The Hiboy packs a lot of features that bring an equally number of quality of life changes into your riding experience. You have a headlight for those late evening strolls, and a state-of-the-art app that keeps track of your activity. I am a number geek and prefer to keep track of usage data of my gadgets for later comparison. So I took the Hiboy Max for a ride, and after a month here is what I have to say. Note that the app has enabled me to provide data without having to do the math for myself, which is an awful lot of convenience. So without further ado, let's jump into the Hiboy Max electric scooter review. The Hiboy Max sports one of the most attractive designs in the market. The reinforced aluminum PCABS chassis results in superior build quality. You can take the scooter on an adventure without the fear of breaking it anytime soon. At the top, you have the LED display, the brakes and the LED headlights which illuminate a significant area in front of the scooter. They are not the most powerful of the bunch, but they get the job done and provides ample vision during late night strolls around the neighborhood. It offers a lot of cool features that were not available in scooters before. Such as the mobile app and the new and more powerful 350W engine. I recommend the Hiboy Max, especially if you're speed demon and prefer a fast commute to your desired destination. Number 8 of my list. McWheel MX Pro. The McWheel MX Pro is a stronger, faster, better version of its direct predecessor, the well-known McWheel MX1. The old version is still alive and well, but beyond 2020, there is no reason for anyone to consider getting it over the new improved version. This scooter is very similar to the Xiaomi M365 in many design aspects and color choices. There are some differences, like the handlebars, the bell, and possibly the shades of gray black red, although that may vary depending on which Xiaomi model and market you're looking at, as they can differ quite a lot. 
The frame of the scooter is made from industrial-grade aluminum alloy, and the details and finishes use steel, rubber, and plastic. With a 16-inch long and 6-inch wide deck, this scooter provides enough standing platform for pretty much everyone. The deck has an anti-slip rubber tape with bumps on it, which will provide the rider with some extra grip and stability. The kickstand is okay, but it would be a lot better if it were longer, as the scooter is not very stable when leaning on it. Honestly, while the McWheel MX Pro is not a bad scooter, and is certainly a huge improvement over the McWheel MX-1. I don't believe it offers enough to differentiate itself from the Xiaomi models, from which it obviously has, KHM, borrowed, a few ideas. For the price, it is a decent scooter, but I would still suggest going with a more reputable scooter like the Glion Dolly, which is just a little more expensive, or even better, the Xiaomi M365 or the Xiaomi M365 Pro. If you think otherwise, you can go ahead and get the McWheel MX Pro. As I said, I love an underdog, and I would love to be proven wrong here. Coming at number 7. Hiboy S2 Pro. Hiboy electric scooters are among most popular and best-selling e-scooter models today. The S2 line of Hiboy electric scooters consists of three models, S2 Lite which is intended for kids, S2 and S2 Pro, both commuting electric scooters. I decided to immediately introduce the best one, the S2 Pro. Why? It's simple, this model impressed me the most, and I think you will like it too. Of course, in this review I will also bring to you to some features of the S2 model as well as a comparative overview of the basic features and differences between the S2 and S2 Pro models, so you could have a complete insight and decide which one suits you better. Let me tell you right away, the basic difference between the Hiboy S2 and S2 Pro is in the maximum range, e the battery life and wheel size. But let's not rush, I'll start over. Hiboy S2 Pro is a high-quality electric scooter. Its compact and foldable design with a relatively light weight of only 36 pounds allows it to be easily carried when not driving. The frame is made of quality aluminum alloy, and I especially like the large and clear control display centrally positioned between the handlebars. This way you can easily monitor the current speed or battery status at any time. The Hiboy S2 Pro has 350 watts brushless motor placed in front wheel. It is powered by a 36 volts, 11. 4A lithium-ion battery, which altogether affects its speed and range. The maximum speed of the Hiboy S2 Pro is 19 miles per hour, a bit more than S2 model. But the real difference between these two models is in battery life and maximum range on a single charge. While the maximum range of S2 is 17 miles, or around 1 hour of continuous ride, at the S2 Pro maximum driving range is 25 miles or almost 1. 5 hours of continuous ride. However, I couldn't believe this huge difference between these two, almost identical electric scooters. When the battery runs out, you need about 6 hours to fully recharge it. So, if you use it as a commuting vehicle there is a plenty of time to recharge it on work or during night while you are sleeping. At number 6. Gotrax, GKS. Over the last few years, my son has had a few different scooters that he likes to ride around on. They're all push scooters, so when we went for a stroll around the neighborhood, he would be tuckered out pretty quickly. Since he was about 3 years old, he's really enjoyed scooting around on those. But recently he decided that he wanted to kick it up a notch and get an electric scooter. We take a lot of walks around our neighborhood and play outside with friends a lot, and we decided that getting an electric scooter would be great fun for him. He is old enough, so we wanted to make sure we could find a scooter that was just right for him something that he could get good use out of the next few years. The new GKS Gotrax electric scooter is the coolest, sleekest gliding gadget out there. The GKS features 63 solid rubber tires that absorb vibrations, making the ride effortlessly on cement or paved roads. It tops out at a safe speed of 7.5 mph, ensuring your rider doesn't go faster than they can handle. The GKS battery lasts up to 4 miles per charge, so you can have plenty of fun before it runs out. The scooter itself only weighs 17. 8 pounds, making it the lightest scooters available. The max weight it can hold is 154 pounds, and height is 5 feet tall. My son is obsessed with this GKS Gotrax electric scooter. 
He loves taking it around the neighborhood, when we go to the park, and especially when we go play at the neighbor's house. All of his friends love to take turns riding it because it rides so easily and smoothly. Most noteworthy to me is that the speed maxes out at 7.5 mph. I have seen scooters that tend to go a litter faster than they should, but this one is perfect. My son likes that it is the perfect size for him, and that the gas is super easy to use. The acceleration button is on the base of the scooter that is powered by stepping on it and kicking off. Stopping is as simple as taking your foot off the button. Overall, we are very pleased with the GKS Gotrax electric scooter. Do you have a child that is looking to amp up their scooter riding game? They will love the GKS Gotrax for kids. Since it's designed for kids, they will feel comfortable and safe kicking off on the scooter. They will enjoy up to 4 miles per charge and using the easy start acceleration. This scooter comes in some really fun colors like blue, black, pink, red, and green. Riding this scooter is a fun way to get out of the house and get active with the whole family. So grab their helmet and get riding. For more information and price, check out the product links in description, underneath the video. Halfway of my listed number 5. Segway Ninibit Zing E8. When buying an electric scooter for your kids, there are a few factors you want to consider. How fast does the scooter go? Is it well built and safe for my child to ride? Is it portable enough that they can easily handle it on their own? One of my favorite features of the Ninibit Zing E8 is its multiple riding modes. This one addition makes the scooter a solid option for beginner riders. On the standard safe mode, the Zing E8 a kick scooter is able to reach a top speed of 6.2 mph. It's certainly nothing too exciting, but it's ideal for young children who have never used an electric scooter and need to safely learn the ropes. Similarly, there's a cruise mode that also reaches 8.7 mph. Your little one simply needs to kick to increase the scooter's top speed. With a maximum climb angle of up to 7%, these modes can come in handy when your child needs some assistance with hilly areas. I will say that I'm a bit disappointed in the Segway Ninibit Zing E8's ability to climb hills. It struggles on steeper inclines, so you're better off sticking with flat surfaces as much as possible. With that being said, going downhill is a different story. Given its slow speeds and limited weight restrictions, the Segway Ninibit Zing E8 is best suited for young children who are not yet familiar with electric scooters. I believe it is better to be used as a learning device or stepping stone before they move on to bigger and better models. With that being said, I still rate the Zing E8 a solid 3. 5 out of 5. It is highly affordable, and if you understand its limitations and why they are in place to begin with, you should be pleased with this unit. However, if you go in expecting a speed demon, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Coming in at number 4 of my list. Razor E100 Glow. When I was growing up, older kids got to speed around on mini bikes powered by lawnmower engines, while I pedaled furiously on my big wheel. Thanks to cheap electronics, children now have access to a wealth of motor-driven vehicles, such as the Razor E100 Glow electric scooter. Yes, Razor, the same company that made all those lightweight push scooters everyone seemed to be riding at the turn of the century. The company has since expanded its lineup, offering a range of electric scooters. After unboxing the E100 Glow, Razor's smallest scooter, I had it assembled in minutes using the included hex wrench. I snagged its charger from the box, found the port on the side of the E100, and plugged it in. While it sat there, I admired its black, tubular construction. I couldn't wait to grab the handlebars and put my feet on the deck, covered with non-skid rubber. As a bit of decoration, Razor includes a strip of blue LED lights around the edge of the deck, hence the glow in its model name. The front brake was a simple caliper, similar to that on bicycles. Under the deck, the specifications noted that there were two lead-acid batteries. The E100's motor turns the rear wheel with a chain drive. Lead-acid batteries, the same type used for decades to power starter motors in cars, seemed a little primitive to me in this era, when lithium-ion appears in most electronics. Perusing the manual, drinking in specs such as its maximum 10 miles per hour speed and 40-minute ride time on a full charge, I was dismayed to read that the maximum rider weight was 120 pounds. I left that weight behind many decades ago. At number 3. Gotrax XR Ultra. 
Electric scooters are handy last-mile transportation alternatives, but the cost of premium rides upwards of $500 can't put them out of reach for consumers looking for an inexpensive way to commute to work or just get around town. The Gotrax XR Ultra won't break any speed or distance records, but it's a solidly built, reasonably priced model that will get you where you need to go, and is one of the better electric scooters under $500. Read the rest of our Gotrax XR Ultra review to see how it compares to the best electric scooters. The Gotrax Ultra is available for $349. It comes in one of three colors. Black with white accents, gray with purple accents, and gray with black accents. The XR Ultra is at the top of Gotrax's lineup, only the company's XR Elite, which has a tail light, and the G3, which has turned signals in an odometer, are pricier. For the price, I was generally pleased with the Gotrax XR Ultra's handling and performance. While it wasn't nearly as powerful as the Inagi Model 1, the XR Ultra was reasonably speedy and quick to respond to my controls. I found the Gotrax's front wheel 300 watt motor to be sufficiently powerful on all but the steepest hills, where it would slow to about 6 to 7 miles per hour, similar to the Swagtron Swagger 5 Elite. The XR Ultra's large 8. 5-inch air-filled tires kept the ride pretty smooth, even though the scooter lacks any additional shock absorption. Braking was responsive, too, stopping the scooter quickly, but allowing precise pressure as I clinched the handbrake. We haven't tested it yet, but the Razer E-Prime 3 has both head and taillights and an adjustable down-to, but a smaller 250-watt motor. Not everyone needs or can afford the ultimate electric scooter, but if you're looking for a capable model that can get you easily around town, the Gotrax XR Ultra is one to consider. For more information and price, check out the product links in description, underneath the video. Coming at number 2, Gotrax GXL V2. We previously ranked the GXL V2 the best electric scooter under $300 for a good reason. It is well built and has an excellent balance of weight, range, and features. The GXL Commuter V2 has the safety and ride quality features we stress the most, quality brakes, pneumatic tires, and built-in lights. We think the GXL V2 is an ideal scooter for beginners who want something inexpensive, but functional. It is light enough for most to carry, has good brakes, decent range, yet won't break the bank. We previously ranked the GXL V2 the best electric scooter under $300 for a good reason. It is well built and has an excellent balance of weight, range, and features. The GXL Commuter V2 has the safety and ride quality features we stress the most, quality brakes, pneumatic tires, and built-in lights. We think the GXL V2 is an ideal scooter for beginners who want something inexpensive, but functional. It is light enough for most to carry has good brakes, decent range, yet won't break the bank. At this price, the GLX V2 competes with no-name brands that pop up on Amazon, often bolstered by fake reviews, then disappear just as quickly. We like that the GXL V2 is backed by Gotrax, a legit company that is here to stay. Results below are based on our independent testing and not data provided by the manufacturer. Read about our testing methodology, or compare with other scooters on our electric scooter performance testing page. Overall, build quality is good. When you consider the price, it's amazing. The latching mechanism was a little finicky, but after some adjustment was solid. Unlike the original GXL commuter, the plastic fenders are reinforced and less likely to break. And number 1. Razer Power Core E90. The PowerCore E90 electric scooter from Razer is a well-thought-out product indeed. I've always been complaining about their runtime, and it was about time they swapped out those chain-driven motors for more energy-efficient hub motors. The E90 is actually a way better choice than the standard E100, apart from the E100 having a pneumatic front tire which helps a lot in reducing shocks. So the E90 has gotten its name power core thanks to Razer switching out the old chain-driven motors for a new 90W hub motor which outperforms the old one by miles, literally. The new motor gives you 100% more runtime on a single charge, and since Razer still uses a 12V lead acid batteries with a charging time of up to 12 hours this is more than welcoming. Did I mention the motor is maintenance-free too it's got a perfectly balanced top speed for kids around 5 to 10 years of age, and my boys just loves it. 
My youngest is four and is used to riding various e rides. He swoops around our outdoor track without a problem in the world. Comparing it to the E100 that I reviewed a while back this thing has the same top speed but double the runtime and it even cost a few dollars less. I don't really understand how that works, but I'm not complaining. If your kids are in the late age range let us say 10 to 13 I would consider the Razer Power Core E100 or the Razer E300. If you have kids around 6 to 8 years this will be an amazing scooter that can follow them for a few years before you have to upgrade to a more powerful model. As always I recommend that you buy some reflection, a clip on lead headlight, and a horn since these don't come as standard on Razer's scooters. For more information and price, check out the product links in description underneath the video. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my channel, share this video and hit the like button.